Have you ever wondered about the early life of Rani Lakshmi Bai, the fearless queen of Hyansi? Let's take a step back in time, to the year 1828, when in the holy city of Varanasi, a child named Manikarnika was born. Tragically, she was orphaned of her mother at a tender age, shaping an unconventional childhood for a girl of her time. Unlike her peers, Manikarnika was not raised to be just a delicate damsel. Instead, she was brought up in an environment that encouraged the learning of martial arts, horsemanship, and archery. This unusual upbringing forged a courageous spirit within her, transforming Manikarnika into a skilled and fearless young woman. Her unique childhood was indeed the foundation for the legendary warrior she was to become. In the year 1842, Manikarnika's life took a significant turn. She married the Maharaja of Jhansi, Raja Gangadhar Rao. With this new chapter, she embraced a new identity. She was now known as Lakshmi Bai, named after the Hindu goddess of wealth and prosperity. Her life seemed to be settling into the royal routine, but fate had other plans. The year 1853 brought an abrupt end to her tranquil existence. Her husband, Raja Gangadhar Rao, passed away, leaving behind their young son, Damodar Rao. This was the beginning of a challenging phase in Lakshmi Bai's life, a phase that would test her courage, strength and resilience. From the cocoon of her royal life, Lakshmi Bai emerged as a fierce protector, not just of her son, but also of her kingdom. She was now the queen, a widow, and a mother, all at the young age of 25. The once playful and carefree girl from Varanasi had evolved into a determined queen, ready to fight for justice. Little did the young Lakshmi Bai know, her life was about to take a dramatic turn. Little did she know that her destiny was intertwined with the fate of her kingdom, and she would soon become a beacon of hope and resistance for her people. Her tale was about to unfold into an epic saga of bravery and resilience that would echo through the annals of Indian history. What would you do if your rights and your kingdom were threatened by a foreign power? This is the situation Rani Lakshmibai found herself in after the death of her husband, the Maharaja of Jhansi, Raja Gangadhar Rao. Her young son, Damodar Rao, was the rightful heir to the throne. But a British policy known as the Doctrine of Lapse stood in their way. The Doctrine of Lapse was an annexation policy introduced by the British East India Company. According to this policy, any Indian territory under the rule of a leader without a biological male heir would automatically be annexed by the British. This policy was a clear contravention of the traditional Hindu laws of inheritance, which allowed for adopted sons to become rightful heirs. Lakshmi Bai, a woman of strong will and determination, was not about to let her kingdom fall into the hands of the British without a fight. She made numerous appeals to the British officials, pleading for the recognition of her adopted son as the rightful heir to the throne. But her pleas fell on deaf ears. The British, ever opportunistic, saw a chance to expand their territories and seized it. In March of 1854, the British officially annexed Yansi. They offered Lakshmi Bai an annual pension, but what they took from her and her son was much more than a kingdom. They stripped them of their rights, their dignity, and their legacy. But what they didn't realize was that they were also igniting a flame of rebellion within Lakshmi Bai. This annexation was not just an act of aggression, it was an act of injustice. It was a violation of the rights of a mother and her son, of a queen and her kingdom. And it was this injustice that would lead Lakshmi Bai to become one of the most iconic figures in the fight for Indian independence. Faced with this injustice, Lakshmi Bai's spirit of rebellion was ignited. And so began the journey of a queen, a mother, and a warrior, who would stop at nothing to reclaim what was rightfully hers. This was the beginning of Rani Lakshmi Bai's legendary resistance against the British rule, a resistance that would forever be etched in the annals of Indian history. What does it take to lead a rebellion against a powerful colonial force? With a heart ablaze and unyielding resolve, Rani Lakshmi Bai took up this daunting challenge. Her role in the Indian Rebellion of 1857, a pivotal moment in India's fight for independence, is nothing short of legendary. 
the annexation of Yunsi by the British was a blatant disregard for the rights of her son and her kingdom. This injustice ignited the flames of rebellion in Rani Lakshmibai's heart, transforming her from a grieving widow to a fearless rebel queen. She refused to accept the British annexation and raised an army to defend her kingdom. Her leadership during the siege of Jhansi became a symbol of resistance against British rule. She led her soldiers with exceptional bravery and strategic acumen, employing a blend of traditional Indian and guerrilla warfare tactics. Her battle cry, Kubladi Mardani, woe to Jhansi Wali Rani Thi, meaning, she who fought like a man was the queen of Jhansi, resonated through the battlefield, inspiring her troops and striking fear in the hearts of the British. In March of 1858, the British forces, led by Sir Hugh Rose, laid a ferocious siege to Jhansi. The battle was fierce, the stakes were high, but the spirit of Rani Lakshmi Bai was indomitable. She fought valiantly, defending her kingdom with all her might, even as the odds stacked against her. Despite her best efforts, Jhansi fell to the British. But this was not the end of the Queen's fight. With her young son strapped to her back, she managed to escape the fort on horseback, leaving behind a burning city, but carrying with her the undying flame of rebellion. Despite the fall of Yansi, the Queen's fight was far from over. This marked the beginning of a new chapter in Rani Lakshmibai's resistance against the British, one that would take her to Gwalior, further fueling her legend and cementing her place in the annals of history. How far would you go to protect your freedom and your people? That's a question Rani Lakshmibai of Jhansi faced head-on when her kingdom fell to the British in March of 1858. But defeat was not in her vocabulary, and she made a daring escape on horseback, her young son Damodar Rao strapped to her back. The queen who had fought like a man wasn't ready to give up just yet. She joined forces with other Indian leaders like Tatya Tope and Rao Sahib, continuing her resistance against the British rule. They set their sights on Gwalior, a significant fort in central India. In the face of adversity, Rani Lakshmibai led her forces into battle once more, the echoes of her famous battle cry still ringing in the air, Kubladi Mardani, woe to Jansi Wali Rani Thi. The Battle of Gwalior proved to be a turning point in the Indian Rebellion of 1857. It was a fierce encounter, with Rani Lakshmibai showcasing her exceptional bravery and strategic acumen once more. But this battle was different. This time, Rani Lakshmibai was not just fighting for Yansi, but for the whole of India. As the battle raged on, the fearless queen was fatally wounded. But even in her last moments, she remained defiant, refusing to be captured by the British. Instead, she urged her trusted companion to cremate her on the battlefield. It was a decision that spoke volumes about her courage and determination. Rani Lakshmibai's death marked the end of a powerful resistance, but it was far from the end of her story. Her bravery, her leadership, and her undying spirit of rebellion left an indelible mark on history. In her final moments, Rani Lakshmibai chose to die a warrior's death. A fitting end to the life of a queen who fought like a man, who stood tall against injustice, and who will forever be remembered as the fearless Rani of Jhansi. What does the legacy of a queen, a warrior, and a mother look like? It looks like Rani Lakshmibai, a symbol of resistance and bravery that transcends time and borders. Her legacy isn't just about battles fought or territories defended. It's about the indomitable spirit of a woman who refused to bow down to injustice, setting a precedent for future generations. In the annals of Indian history, Rani Lakshmibai's name is etched with golden letters, not just as the Queen of Yansi, but as a courageous leader who ignited the flame of rebellion against the oppressive British rule. Her valiant stand during the Indian Rebellion of 1857, also known as the First War of Indian Independence, served as a catalyst, inspiring countless others to join the fight for freedom. Rani Lakshmibai's strategic prowess, her ability to inspire her troops, and her fearlessness in the face of adversity, have made her a revered figure in military history. Her battle cry, Kubladi Mardani, woe to Yansi Wali Rani Thi, she who fought like a man, she was the queen of Chansi, resonates even today, a reminder of her unyielding spirit.
but her legacy extends beyond the battlefield. She shattered the stereotypes of her time, demonstrating that a woman could rule, fight, and lead with as much if not more, effectiveness and courage as a man. Her story has become a source of inspiration, particularly for women, encouraging them to break barriers and challenge conventions. Rani Lakshmibai's sacrifice and bravery continue to inspire generations. She is remembered as one of the key figures in India's struggle against colonial rule, her story taught in schools, depicted in films, and celebrated in literature. Her life and legacy serve as a powerful reminder of the strength of women and their crucial role in shaping the course of history. Her fortitude, her resilience, and her unyielding commitment to justice make her a timeless icon. The legacy of Rani Lakshmibai is a testament to the power of resistance and the indomitable spirit of humanity in the face of oppression. Rani Lakshmibai of Jhansi remains a beacon of strength and determination, a testament to the power of resilience and the pursuit of justice.